This call may be recorded for note-taking and coaching purposes. Hey, Jordan, how are you doing? Hey, Vikran, how are you? I'm good, I'm good. Thank you. Good to see you again. Good to see you too. Um, <clears throat> what I was thinking was, are you going to share this Zoom or can we do it on my Zoom where I can record it and then just have the feed? Let me make you the host. Um, oh, if we just switch hosts, it, it should yes. save to mine or we'll yeah. save to yours. Yeah, it's going to be saved. I think it should be saving to yours. Um, let me make you host. Okay. Because I, I shared a link earlier that could, uh, let me get this thing set up. Um, Seems like you're a host now. Okay. Let me get this thing set up. So there, we'll get some oh. light. Yeah, it, it turns around once you, once you hop on the thing, everything changes. You're like, oh, <laughs> makes it a little bit easier. So if I record this, it should go to my cloud then. Yes. Can you try now? Okay. Can you try to record? Yeah, yeah, I'll just do a sample one. Recording in progress. That works. Recording stopped. Yeah, it, it would be in, in your in your Zoom. You can simply like have a recording just after the call. Okay. Yeah, I mean okay. in case, in case if you don't have if you don't get the recording, we have bestsellingbook.com note taker. So this also records this entire call. So if you want, I can send you the link of that. You can download it and you can use it. That okay. also works. Perfect. Perfect. Awesome. And then so what we're going to talk about is what we were talking about is how to write the book in five days, right? Mm -hmm. Sure. Okay. And then let me pull up your little bio. What's it? What's the note taker? Oh, so I use this tool to actually record my sales calls. Okay. And uh, there's an AI artificial intelligence tool which actually track where I'm making mistake, uh, exactly how I can improve my sales score. So all of my sales team uses this. Okay. So, uh, so yeah, this is for that purpose. Like, but usually whenever someone outside from bestsellingbook.com joins our Zoom meeting, it automatically comes on board and it starts recording. That. Yep. Yeah, I got you. I got you. That's interesting. Um, so for the bio, I got uh, Vic Vicrant. Yeah, Vicrant. How do you say your last name? Sharia. Sharia. Yeah. That was bad. Or that was <laughs> no, no, it was bad. Vicrant Vic Sharia. What? Vicrant Sharia. Vicrant Sharia. He's the yeah. CEO and founder of bestsellingbook.com. He's also the author of two number one bestsellers, Power, the Success Mantra, and How to Write a Bestselling Book, How to, How to Write a Bestseller, Becoming a Bestselling Author, Attracting High Value Clients, and Skyrocketing Your Authority. Vic Grant is also the most viewed author on ebook publishing on Quora and is recognized by the National Academy of Bestselling Authors. Perfect. Anything else you want to include or that's, that's solid? That's, that's fine. All right, cool. And then we'll, we'll do a little bit about your story and then we'll hop into this. How do you write a book in five days? Cause I find sure. that kind of interesting. Yeah. And then we'll, yeah. we'll talk for the last like 10, 15. Sounds good. Let's try it out. Yeah, sure. Recording in progress. Hey, what's going on, guys? I got a special guest today. We have Vic Ranchura. He's the CEO and founder of bestsellingbook.com. He's also the author of two number one bestsellers. The first one is Power, the Success Mantra. And the second is How to Write a Bestseller, Becoming a Bestselling Author, Attracting High Value Clients, and Skyrocketing Your Authority. Vic Rant is the most viewed author on ebook 
most viewed author for ebook publishing on Quora and is recognized by the National Academy of Best Selling Authors. Vikrant, how are you doing today? Hey, Jordan, thank you so much for having me. I'm doing good. Uh, really excited for our conversation today. Yeah, we're excited to have you on the Clocked In podcast. So, Vikrant, where did your story start? Okay. Um, so it's a very, very long story, but I'll try to be, I'll try to keep it short. Uh, so 11, 12 years ago, I was in engineering college and, uh, my friends, my family, they wanted me to become an engineer, you know, like I, I come from India and in, in India, like if you're not a doctor or engineer or a government employee, then people think that you are going to be a big time failure. <laughs> so yeah, this, no. is, this is the fact. Yeah, and, this is a lot to take in because in the U.S., it's a, there's a little bit of doing your own thing, but in India, it's very, I'm just saying this for the audience so that people can understand that it's not, there's a lot of other pressures coming to you saying you have to do this, you have to do this, or you're a failure. Yeah. So how did you overcome that? Yeah, and, and <laughs> funniest thing, uh, people think that, especially when you're doing an online business, People think that you are in a scam business or something. And one day or another day, cops are going to come at your place and they're going to take you to prison. <laughs> so this is, this is the kind of mentality which is changing for good. But 10 years ago, like everyone used to feel like, like if you are doing a business, it's, it's just going to be a failure. Like people, are, people see you as a failure that you, you were not, you were not able to become an engineer or a doctor or a or government employee. So uh, I decided to go to an engineering college and uh, I was of course liking the social life because no one was there to have a surveillance on me. I was living in another city away from my parents. Um, so I was enjoying the social life, making so many good friends, but I used to hate uh, the lectures, the college lectures, it was, it used to be very much theoretical and I found it very boring. So instead of going to going and attending college lectures, I used to go to college library and I discovered this uh, self-help section where I used to read a lot of books about self-help, like motivation, business, and all these different things. And one fine day I found this book in the college library called Rich Dad, Poor Dad by Robert Kiyosaki. And it, it completely changed my mind about finance and life and money. And I, the very same day I decided to do something of my own. I decided that engineering is not for me because in this one and a half year, um, I met so many seniors like, and I saw them, I, I visited their offices and they were not happy, right? They were working in a cubicle. They weren't enjoying their life, their, their work at all i decided that this is not for me and i'm not meant for engineering so the very same day i just dropped out of the college so here i was um still had no idea what i'll be doing but within just one month i got a business idea i i borrowed some money from my seniors my friends and started a company hired a bunch of people um and within six months I made a lot of mistakes, bunch of mistakes. And within six months, I completely ran out of money. I had no money to pay my employees, no money to run the business. So I had to shut down the company. So here I was, 18 year old, uh, in financial debt, completely broke, not able to pay my rents, my bills. My landlord used to call me every single day that when, when are you going to be paying the bills and rents? Um, it was, I guess, three or four months, like I didn't pay the rents. So it was tough. But um, yeah, here I was living in a single room apartment with a broken laptop and a 2G net speed searching online how to make money online. Um, yeah. And then I discovered self-publishing. So this was my first introduction to self-publishing that I can write books, publish books and make some money, make some royalty income from there. So this is actually my, my journey. Like, of course we can discuss about exactly what happened, what happened in the second phase. But this is my background. This is exactly where I come from. 
Yeah, it's really the trial and errors and trying to figure out what's going to work for you. So one of the things I want to point out that's really awesome about your story is that as soon as you had something in your head, you made the decision and you took action and you left school. I could imagine that that was a difficult decision just based on family pressures, country pressures, all of that. But going off on your own must have felt very empowering for you. So you get to the self-publishing department and you realize about this. And, and what was the ma- big takeaway you learned like before yes. you really hopped into it? Uh, for me, it was all about just to make money, right? Like, because I knew that like I, when I told my dad uh, that I have dropped out of the college after six months, uh, it was a very difficult situation for me because I saw him crying for the very first time. You didn't, so, you didn't tell him for six months? No, I didn't tell him. Like my dad used to call me every single day and ask me in the evening that, hey, son, how was your college? And I used to <laughs> tell him that the college was good. I, I had no courage to tell wow. him that, that wow. I have dropped out. So... Um, but yeah, like, and, and meanwhile, I was doing my business thing and everything. When my business failed, uh, now I had no, I was in a, in a guilt that I'm lying to my parents. And uh, so I decided to go back to my hometown and tell my dad that this is what happened. And I went back. My dad is like a, a family guy. He was very happy that everyone is together again. He cooked the dinner himself that day. <laughs> and I shared him the news that this is what happened. And initially he thought that I'm just kidding. Yeah. And uh, when I when he saw that I'm serious, like he started crying. He logged himself for three days, wasn't eating. Um, and I, I had to go back to the, the place where I was living, right? Another city. Yeah. So I just touched his feet. Like in India, like we touch our elders' feet just to take blessings. So I touched his feet. Like he, of course, gave me um, the blessing. He hugged me. He just told me that uh, don't do anything wrong, which is against the law. That's it. He just didn't say anything. And then we were not in talking terms for the next one year. Wow. Not, yeah, I guess seven or eight months we were not in talking terms. But yeah, sometimes my mom used to call me just to check whether I'm alive or not. (laughs) So it was difficult for me, but um, so I went back uh, and and I discovered self-publishing and uh, I started writing my first book. I, and you know, like just to tell you my background, like I used to get lowest grades in English subject, like English is not my first language. So, and, yeah. uh, but just because I had to pay my bills, I had no excuse. Yeah. So I just started writing and within 21 days, I was able to write my first book. So, wow. so I wrote that book and uh, of course it was, a, it was written very, very badly. My girlfriend back then like was very good at academics. Um, she was a university topper and she actually fixed the, the grammar. See, she actually did the proofreading and fixed oh, the book. Oh, the proofreading, the editing, yeah. <laughs> Uh, so by the way, now she's my wife. Ah, that's incredible. <laughs> so, so yeah, like I, I published that book and the first month I made around $27. So it was a huge deal for me making $27, yeah. uh, online. And I still remember that it was midnight, 12 something. And I was jumping on my bed <laughs> and I got to know that this is, this is what I have made. And I was actually seeing something. Of course, yeah. for everyone, it twenty-seven dollar is nothing. But for me, it was everything because I started seeing some results. It was so, the proof uh, of concept, yeah, which is massive, especially when starting a business. You, that first dollar, you're like, oh, we'll put it on the shrine. <laughs> <laughs> so I, the the second thing which uh, the next thing which I did is I started writing another book, and this time, I wrote the second book in just three days. Wow. In this was a very short book, just 50 pages book. But this this time I also did marketing on both of these books. And this month I made around four forty dollars. So uh, 
so four hundred and forty dollars. Four hundred and forty dollars. Yep. Wow. That's a big jump. <laughs> it, it was a big jump for me. So um, I was able to pay my bills, my, my rent, right? So, um, and then, you know, like th th things started changing because some people started reaching out to me that, hey, like, how did you write the book? Like, please help me out. Because actually I used to post my book covers on Facebooks and all. Yeah. So there were some entrepreneurs, friends in on my Facebook who used to live in, on, in United, United States or different places yeah. so they started contacting me so for initially two or three people i helped them for free then i started adding them a, a little bit of coaching fees to help them out yeah to, to how to write and publish books um then within just one or two years i launched dozens of courses and ebooks and programs on how to write and publish books but the yeah. thing is um there were so many people like who like of course there, there were tens of thousands of people like who went through the courses uh, and, and of course, the reaction was good, but there were so many people who started reaching out to me saying that we don't have the time to write the book. Yeah. Please help me out. You can write the book. And you know, like, I'm not a good writer. So I just told them, no, I'm not going to be helping you out. You have to write the book yourself. It is an easy process. Like English is not uh, my first language. Still, I was able to write the book. And still, there were so many people who were saying, no, I, we can't write the book. We don't have the time. We don't have the skill set. Yeah. So I, I was seeing the opportunity yeah. that here is an opportunity where I can really leverage. And what I did is I assembled a team of writers, ghostwriters, editors, proofreaders, yeah. designers, uh, publishers, marketers, and created this done for you publishing company. Yeah. I legally incorporated the company in United States. Okay. And uh, started running the business. And, um, Initially, the company's name was the Books Factory because we were producing books. But, but almost all the books which we were producing, it started becoming bestseller. So we <laughs> we relaunched the company, we renamed, renamed the company and made it bestsellingbook.com. Yeah. Since then, we have helped more than 500 people with our done-for-you services. Oh, wow. Uh, to actually take their book idea and turn it into best-selling book in just six months, even when they just have the book idea. We don't, they don't have to spend their time or skill set. We do all the work for them, 99% yeah. of the heavy lifting. And um, they just enjoy the best selling books. That's incredible. That's amazing. I love how it had the progression, the sequence, and the growing. And for you, once you realized books were an asset, how were you able to go about this, write a book in three days? Because I know on this, uh, one of our goals is to talk about how to write a book in five days, which doesn't even, it like perplexes people because you hear these stories about different people. I've had the founder of Reebok on, Joseph Foster, and he wrote his book and he goes, I've been working on this for seven or eight years, man. And I'm like, wow, like it's really cool seeing it done in a much expedited process. So how would someone go about that? How, how did you, like, is there a mental barrier you got to break down? What is it? What, what's the... So uh, one of the things which we need to understand is we are living in our 21st century. Yes. Uh, every industry has changed and it has changed completely, right? So communication industry has changed, transportation industry has changed, even publishing industry has changed. Initially, it was traditional publishing. Now people are simply moving to self-publishing. But the book writing, the process of book writing is completely same as it used to be in 19th century. So people, like in 19th century, people used to sit down and write the book. Maybe they were using some pen and paper or maybe stones. They were writing on stone. But the process is still the same. Although we are using some tools like Google Doc or MS Word and we are writing, we are just typing, but the process is the same. Like we are sitting down and actually start writing in every, every each and every words. With the help of new technologies and artificial intelligence, you don't have to uh, write the book yourself. Uh, there are some tools. Uh, artificial intelligence tool we'll be mentioning i'll be mentioning that some of them in a while but with the help of these actually these tools can be your 21st century ghostwriters 
you will oh, be wow. providing you'll be providing them commands and they will be using those commands commands to uh, start writing the book for you right it's going to help you build the book outline also create the title and subtitle also create the book description also it's going to start writing each and every chapters yeah and uh, especially non fiction books yeah so now let's talk about how this is possible like how someone can instead of taking 7 years 10 years like i also have met people like who were trying to write their book for 20 years 25 years yeah and of course the journey was was very frustrating so we need to understand that the more time you will give to this book writing project the more frustrating it would be yeah so and that makes a lot of sense because the more you put into something the usually the more return you want to get out of it so when you apply a bunch of information to it and it takes you a lot of time that usually is a place of where you're going to provide a lot of value that's why relationships have value jobs have value businesses have value so you have to be aware of this while writing it so i just wanted to add that mm, exactly so the idea is this very very simple that first of all there's always a mental barrier we have told we were told that uh, to write a book it's it's going to take several years and let me share with you one of the story which like real life story and then it is going to be essential for the listeners to write the book as soon as possible yeah um so what happened was um this person uh was like i was on a podcast uh i guess last month uh and this podcast host was actually shared with me what happened with him in his book writing journey so he was trying to write this book for 16 years wow and somehow he was able to complete his book his manuscript finally and he actually in every chapter he used some quotes from famous people and yeah. then he leveraged those quotes and built the entire content of those chapters based on those quotes now what's okay. the and somehow when the book is written he uh, decided that okay let me reach out to all of these people like who and ask their permission to use the quotes in their book and then when he started reaching out to these people most of them said no you can't use their quotes so now the entire 16 year is completely wasted for him he can't use yeah. most like 70 to 80 percent of the content in the book because most of the content is based on those quotes yeah so now he has to start from scratch so this could happen so that's why it is very essential for you to write the book get the first draft as soon as possible so that you can of course start working on the editing start working on making sure that the book is finalized otherwise it's going to take you forever and you will not be able to complete the book does it make sense yeah it's better to write it even if there's a bunch of errors a bunch of mistakes yeah. get the content on the paper and mm. figure something out <laughs> right so before i disclose the secret of how to write a book in 5 days uh, let me share with you these three mistakes which people make when they yeah. are actually trying to write a book and these yeah. three mistakes are the foundational pieces which is going to help you write the book in 5 days first of all whenever most of the people whenever they start writing a book they always start with chapter number 1 yeah so they think that okay this is going to be the chapter number 1 but the problem with that is they don't know where to start the chapter where to end that chapter where to start the chapter number 2 that's the problem so to solve this problem like you always have to start with the book outline book outline is kind of a business plan for your business right so again like yeah. this book book outline is going to be your business plan for your book which is also your business so always start with your book outline create a rough table of content it's not it not it is not required to be very very perfect you can keep on changing later once you start writing but at least start with something the yeah. second mistake is people whenever they start writing the book they try to also make every content or every chapter perfect before they move to the next chapter so for for example if they have written maybe two pages today 
they want to now make this these two chapters perfect before they move to the next chapters or next content. And this is again a problem because, you know, like again, the same thing could happen. Like it could take you several years and yeah. then you you have done maybe just a few pages or just a few chapters of the book. So it's better to just, your goal is to get your first draft as soon as possible. And it's going to be a shitty first draft, but don't worry yeah. about that. Yeah. You, you, your goal is to get that done as soon as possible. So second is, the second mistake and how to fix it is, uh, yeah, people try to make the content perfect while they're writing. Don't do that. Your goal should be to create the first draft or get ready, uh, the f make the first draft ready as soon as possible. So keep on writing. Don't think a lot about the logical flow and making sure that every word and every grammatical sentence is properly fine. Don't worry about that. You will be fixing it later. The third mistake, I think I mentioned that people think that to to sit down, people think to 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 write a book, you have to sit down and actually write the book. That's not true. You can use three ways to actually write the book without you writing the book. The first one is have a ghostwriter. If you have a money, if you don't care about the money, just simply hire a ghostwriter or you can hire us and we can simply take your interview and write the book for you in your voice with your unique personality. So this is the first way. The second is... Well, what, uh... I don't, I don't really mean to cut you off here, but what's the range of a ghostwriter? So it like, depends. Is it like, yeah, so what, what do you think the range would be? So if you are going with a cheaper ghostwriter, then it is less than $10,000. If okay. it is a medium, then it is $10,000 to $20,000, $25,000. To get a really pro and premium ghostwriter, it is twenty five grand plus. Okay. So... Um, once you uh, write, uh, yeah, so this is the first way to simply hire a ghostwriter. The second is you don't have to write the book. You simply, what you can do is instead of, once you have the book outline ready, simply record it, simply start talking, simply narrate the chapters. Most people are good at speaking their ideas instead of writing. So what they can do is simply switch on a recording on their phone or something and simply start talking. For example, chapter number one, subchapters, uh, and all these, you can start, start talking about all of these different things and have all these recorded files in one place. You can upload it on some tools like rev.com or happyscribe.co, which actually transcribe the entire audio into text, and you have the first draft ready. So, of course, it's going to be a not a, in good condition, but now you have everything over there. Most of the content is there. You just have to arrange it. You just have to make sure that it is fine, but you have the first draft ready. So this yeah. is the, sec the second way. The third way, which we'll be talking about, uh, which is using artificial intelligence to write the book. And that artificial intelligence uh, tool, which I have used to write my book in five days, was Jarvis, J-A-R-V-I-S dot A-I. Usually, like people, people use Jarvis to write Facebook ad copies or headlines or email copies, but there are some ways where you can also use these tools to write the entire manuscript, entire book. So, just to show to people what I have done is, I have, I wrote my own book, another book, in five days, just last month. And I documented the entire process. It means I screen recorded everything. And every day I used to just write for a few hours. And in five days, total 10 hours, maximum 10 hours, my book's first manuscript was ready. Or first draft was oh, ready. Wow. Total 10 hours. Now there's no excuse. You can just simply provide the right commands. And then Jarvis is going to be start writing the book for you. Okay. So it is going to help you create your title, subtitle, description, book outline, and uh, also each and every chapters. It is also yeah. going to be do the research for you, provide the research details. And you can, of course, cross-check the facts, but yeah, it's going to provide you some research details. And it, now some tools are very, very advanced, which is going to make the entire writing fun. So yeah. I have documented the entire process, like, 
how what to do on the day number one, day number two, day number three, four, five. Uh, so if people are going to go to bestsellingbook.com forward slash challenge, they can actually go through the entire thing. Currently, like we have, uh, uh, we have made it $27 uh, for this entire challenge, but we are planning to make it free for public. It's the entire challenge. Like we are planning to make it free, make it available for the for everyone for free. So maybe once the podcast is going to be live, so it should it it could be free. So oh, simply, amazing. yeah. So simply, people can go to bestsellingbook.com/challenge, and then they can see exactly how I was able to use this artificial intelligence tool to write the entire book in just five days, total ten hours. Wow. It's very simple. Like day number one, I just focused on uh, coming up with that with the title, subtitle, also understanding uh, the audience. I created the outline quadrant, uh, the idea why you are writing the book, the readers and the hook, which means the outline quadrant. I'll be talking more about it in like we have a proper video over there. Yeah. Uh, how to create the book outline within just half an hour with the help of Jarvis. Once it is done. So the day number one, I think I just spent one hour. Day number two, I, I think I spent two, one or two hours or something. And I worked on five, four or five chapters. Day number three, I worked on another four or five chapters. So I guess total there were seven or eight chapters or something. And then yeah. remaining two days, I just went through each and every manuscript and make sure that most of the content is fine. And then, of course, I can simply hire an editor or a proofreader and then, of course, make it perfect. So I'm planning to make it available for free for the audience. So maybe once it is this podcast is live, it would be free. So simply people can yeah. go to bestsellingbook.com slash challenge and then they can see exactly how people can, how you can write the book in just five days. No excuse. Yeah, that's incredible. I appreciate that. That'd be awesome. Because I, it, it always happens that whenever these podcasts happen, people will reach out and they go, wow, that guy was cool. Wow, that was interesting. Wow, that was actionable. But it's really like, what's the next step? And it's for each of these people listening to write their own book mm. and for you to provide the, the timeline and the steps is absolutely incredible. It's amazing. And, and along with this, I also want to give, give something to your audience. And it is, so once the book is written, they also should know that what is next. What are the next steps? Like people are very much confused what to do, what not to do. And that's why they just procrastinate. Yeah. To, help, uh, to help with this, like actually we use a checklist for our done for you clients, our private clients. So now I've made this checklist public, available. Oh, wow. So people can simply go to bestsellingbook.com slash checklist they can download this checklist, which includes all the steps and sub steps included in the entire book writing, publishing and marketing journey. And this checklist also comes with a blueprint, which explains how to use the checklist. So people can simply download this checklist, print it out, paste it on the wall in front of where they're actually writing the book or working on their publishing journey. And it's going to make the entire journey very fun. Yeah, because it gives a direction on where to go because you write this book. Where do I market it? Do I put it on this? Do I put it on there? What website? Mm. Where? Where does it all go? That's that's incredible, Vikran. You're uh, you're really helping the people. I, I really appreciate this. Awesome, no problem, man. So, uh, so there is a writer's block. Like, of course, people talk about writer's block, and it is not just an imaginary thing. Even uh, some seasonal writers they also face this problem. They also face this writer's block. But with the help of these artificial intelligence tools like Jarvis.ai, it can help you overcome that and actually get your book written in just five days or maybe less than that, or maybe maybe more than that, but that's fine. You don't have to spend six or seven or so 16, six or seven or 16 years to write the book. Yeah. Maybe you can spend seven days, 10 days, maybe one month, but that is fine. It is ex acceptable. But you should not spend more than one month to actually write the first draft. So just wanted to show with a real life case study that how I was able to write the book. And I documented everything. Most of the part is not very 
could be boring because actually I'm sitting and I'm providing the command and it is writing the book for me. It would be monotonous, but this is just to show them the proof that yeah. this is possible, right? So it's yeah. a 10 hours of content. Uh, oh, wow. but yeah, but yeah. Uh, and in 10 hours, my book was book was written. Everything, whenever I was actually working on the book's manuscript, I was recording my screen. <laughs> And That's this incredible. is yeah. So this is a ten hours content, but yeah, I provided so many resources, so many um, tricks and tips, to exactly how to use Jarvis, how to provide the command, and how to make sure that it is not writing something else. So yeah. because it is just like your ghostwriter, the type of command which you'll give to your ghostwriter, you have to give it to over here. And but of course, it, it works something different. You you'll and um, you can of course write the entire book without you writing the book, right? So yeah. one more thing which you can do is you don't have to, to give a command, you don't have to write it. You can also like provide with the help of Mike, you can simply talk and then this could write. So, oh, wow, that's awesome. So I have shared everything in that challenge, the five days book writing challenge, and I'm planning to make it free. So maybe if you are listening, to this episode now so maybe if you go to bestsellingbook.com forward slash challenge it could be free so go there check it out and if it is free just don't wait for uh to again make it 27 dollars or 19 minutes 97 dollars because of course my marketing team is actually playing some different things so just make sure to grab it if it is free yeah for sure and i'll put that link in the bio make sure that everyone has that as that's a resource that needs to be shared Absolutely. Yeah. So Vikram, for you, what did you find that you've obviously written a couple different books? What, did, what have you found allows for some books to do better, some books to sell more, some, some to land more? What, what is it exactly? Is it jumping into a niche? Is it going very broad? What, what have you found? So there are four P which are very, very important when you are writing and publishing, marketing the book. The first is produce where actually you're producing the manuscript or you can also call it product because the book is your product right and uh, yeah. so you have to give it to your best like you have to really provide some real uh real life solutions to the real life problem just to make sure that people find it valuable so make sure that your product or in this case your book is really good like provide really good information over there once the book is written then comes packaging. So product, then packaging. And packaging is like people, most of the people don't take it seriously, but it, it is really, really important. You need to understand that when you are publishing the book on Amazon or other places, you're not just publishing your book, you're actually publishing your brand or you're publishing yourself over there. People are gonna be judging you based on their experience reading the book. So if you yeah. have some really weird looking book cover or some bad formatting inside the book or grammatical mistakes, people are not gonna be taking you seriously. So have a really professional book cover designer, have a really professional book formatter, have a really professional proofreader or editor who's gonna fix the entire error. And so that just to make sure that this book looks really professional. And if people are gonna be reading it, they want to, they should be like, oh, this book's really, look really good, really premium. I want to work with this author, right? So that's yeah. your goal. The third is the pricing. And the pricing, of course, uh, you have to really do the research, find out top 50 books in the market, see what is the average pricing of these books. And then, of course, you can have those books uh, for your, you can have, you can list your book uh, for that pricing. The fourth P is promotion. So product, package, Pricing, promotion. So promotion is, again, very, very important. Exactly how to do the promotion is the key where the people are able to see your book in front, of, in front of their eyes. If you are not doing the proper promotion, then they are not seeing it. So there are two types of promotion. The first is on-page promotion or on-page SEO. So we need to understand that Amazon is just like Google, which has their... SEO thing going on. People don't just go to any specific category and then find your book. They simply go there and leverage the search bar. 
if you're writing a book about maybe productivity, then people just simply go there and search for productivity book or marketing book or sales book. And then if you are not using right keywords, then your book is not going to be showing on the top or the first page. So you have to really leverage the right kind of keywords. So Amazon allows you to go for uh, choose seven keywords and 10 categories. So make sure that you use right keywords and right categories. There are some tools out there like Publisher Rocket, which is a one-time investment of, I guess, 97 or $99. You can see, uh, uh, invest in that. But this tool is actually going to be helping you find profitable categories and keywords with less competition. So you can use those keywords and categories and which is going to help you. And you can use these keywords in your book description, your book title as well. And so that once people are, are going to be searching in the search bar, it should come uh, on the top. Once it is done, then you can leverage uh, paid promotion. These paid promotion are uh, like Amazon ads, book by ads, right? So you can start leveraging that. There's also nowadays one of the best promotional tool out there which people just simply underestimate and it is working really good for our clients is podcasts. So you can, really? yep. Think about it. Like for example, if you have written a book about sales, you can go to this platform called listennotes.com. Listen Notes is one of the world's best or the biggest directories of podcasts. So almost all the podcasts in the world, you can find it over there. So if you search yeah. for sales, you can find tens of thousands of episodes on, um, on, uh, on sales and also thousands of podcasts specifically on sales. And you can find people or so podcast hosts, websites and email address, direct email address. Yeah. And, and you can really simply, you don't, have, you don't have to spam them. You can either have your assistant or you can do that. Initially, you can do that yourself. But you can, what you can do is you can listen to maybe five or six minutes of the recent episodes and let them know, like email them that, hey, like love your podcast. Just re listen to your recent podcast with this person. And when you were talking about this, this is, I really like that. I think, and this is your assistant telling me about you to this person that, hey, I think I have yeah. a great guest for you and he's a best-selling author on this topic or maybe published author on this topic and he can really provide massive value on your, to your audience. If you, and he also has this number of followers. So if you, so something like that. And then if you want, I can make a connection and I can schedule him. And out of 10, what I'm seeing out of 10, two or three people actually want them to come on a show. And if you are a published author, people really, really enjoy talking to published author. And the best part is these hosts actually will be asking you questions specifically about your books. Yeah. And in the end, they will be asking you where people can find you and where people can find your book. So it's a free promotion Correct. for your book. Yeah. And at the same time, you're also building a brand. Absolutely. 100%. And then having the podcast, you get to meet all of these fascinating people. So yeah. it comes on both sides. Uh, I completely agree with that. Podcasts are a very underutilized um, in the marketplace. There, I mean, there are a lot of podcasts, but not a lot of people keep following through with them and keeping them maintained. So yeah, I've seen that a lot. That makes a lot of sense. That's awesome. Vikrant, I know... Um, we got a set amount of time. Is there anything that you want to leave the audience with? You've provided us with a ton of value, how to write a book in five days. What are the major components of publishing, packaging, pricing, creating? Um, you provided a ton of value. Is there anything you want to leave the audience with and where can they find you? Yeah. Um, so one thing which you need to understand is, uh, and most people like simply don't understand this, that whenever they try to write a book, they, they really don't understand that they're, they're not writing the book for themselves. They are writing the book for their readers. So you really have to understand what are the pain points, what are the problems people are facing, and, and then you have to really see where exactly they are and where they want to go. I Means what are the desires they, they, they are having. So join Facebook groups. Check out Reddit, check out Quora, and 
see what kind of mistakes or what kind of problems people are facing. And this is going to help you write the book for them. And now the promotion becomes very easy. You don't have to sell very, very hard because you have written the book, which actually solves some problem, right? So it's all about how you structure your information which you have and actually give it to them. Yeah, so, um, so of course people see that, right? So give them what they need and sell them what they, what, what they want. So, so this is what you have to do. Like always think about your readers and then write the book for them, not about you. Yeah. So this is my final say and uh, where people can find me. Uh, I'm active on LinkedIn. So people like if people are going to be searching, just simply Google Bikran Shorya, you can, I think the first link is LinkedIn. Um, and Yeah, I'll and, put the link in the bio for sure. Awesome. Your LinkedIn bio. Yeah. yeah. Sure. And I if just, you... Mm -hmm. Yeah, go. So if you, if uh, you have a book uh, which you want to write and you want to hire an professional company to actually take care of the entire thing, including book writing, editing, cover designing, publishing, marketing, sales, reviews. We guarantee that the book is going to be number one bestseller. Otherwise, we refund three times their, your investment. So it's wow. a bold, bold um, uh, guarantee. But yeah, like we have never refunded anyone. So, <laughs> <laughs> so we have a 100% success rate. So, uh, we also help people on getting on Wall Street Journal bestseller. So if you yeah. are interested in that, like we can also help you do that. So just simply check out bestsellingbook.com. Check out some testimonials and case studies. If you think we are a fit, just simply schedule a call. And if you want to, if you don't have the money or don't have the financial resources, just simply check out bestsellingbook.com slash challenge. I believe it should be free. Or uh, bestsellingbook.com slash checklist. I'm sorry. I think you need to cut this. So... Yeah bestsellingbook.com slash challenge, which is going to be five day book writing challenge, how to write your book in just five days and bestsellingbook.com slash checklist, which will be having all these steps and sub steps to write the book for you. Amazing. Awesome. Vikram, I appreciate the time and this has been awesome. Recording stopped. All right. Awesome. Um, it was fun. Yeah. I yeah, that was cool. I You give a lot of actionable stuff. I think one thing that could be um, cool is like, so after you finish, like, because you do a good amount of podcasts, right? Yeah. Yeah, so after you finish, just at the end, say, hey, I want to give your audience this, this, and this. And then maybe there's a way on your website where it could be a bestselling book dot challenge. And then maybe there's a code they can put in like podcast or whatever it is mm. so that it's automatically free so that it's not like uh, it might be free kind of thing. You know what I mean? And it's just for those that listen. So it feels like a gift. Wow. Um, That's a great idea, I think. So uh, maybe I can increase the price to maybe $99 or nine nine ninety seven dollars or something. <laughs> and once you... So I can create like whenever I'm going on a call with people like you, so I can simply create coupon code like Jordan. And once they put Jordan or plugged in, they can simply get, get it for free. Yes. This is so that really you're giving a gift to the audience, not going, hey, I'm not really sure where my marketing team's at, but they really feel the value and they go, if I have a book question, I'm going to Bikram. You know what I mean? I love this. I love this. Thanks for yeah. this brilliant idea. I love yeah, this. Yeah, because I was sitting there and I'm like, it's very solid because it, you, it, 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 it's almost a gift to the audience. But then you're like, I'm not sure where the marketing team's at when it releases. And I'm like, you know <laughs> what I mean? Not, not like it's a bad thing or a good thing, but I'm just like, just, just give it as a gift. Like, give it as a gift. <laughs> so yeah. I, mean, I can even be the first one. You set it up and then I'll just say, put in this clocked in code. and Sure. I mean, whatever it is, just because I think that will really land with people, not like, hey, we saved a hundred dollars or we saved twenty-seven or whatever it is. Mm. And especially when things are free, people are like, mm. right. I don't really know the value. <laughs> I mean, I right. understand the value of things. Like, I think that's awesome. But I think that's a really good, uh, like, a slight distinction. And then people feel it more when they're in the group and whatnot. 
I love this. I love this. Thank you so much for that wonderful idea. Let me let me start uh, working on it. Maybe by tomorrow it should be ready. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I'm not gonna. I have a uh, two more podcasts. I'm doing one a week, so this one will probably go up in like first week of December. Mm -hmm. I'll I'll email you and let you know so you can share it as well. Um, and then my other question is, I have someone who's got a best selling book. They were already selling the book, and they're looking at doing the audio book. What do you think the best website would Amazon be the best or like to just make money on it? Like the book's already sold tons of copies and now it's at the point where they don't want to do the hardcover book. They already have the audio book. Mm -hmm. It's and what's the best way to move that audio book? Is it Amazon? Because I know Amazon takes like 30 percent or something, but I saw you did really good on Quora. Uh, so one thing which you can do, let me send you the link as well. So there are two ways where you can uh, actually get your book on um, on audiobook. The first is ACX, ACX.com, which stands for Audiobook Creation Exchange, which is also owned okay. by Amazon. So you can get the book published over there. You can also find some people like who is going to be recording and narrating the voice. And then your book is going to be published on Audible, uh, Amazon, I think Apple Books and all the different places. All right. There's also a better place called um, findawayvoices.com. I put it, put the link over there. This is also one of the best uh, distribution channel. Like you'll be getting the best distribution across the world. And also like you get more royalties. Like I, I believe 80% of the royalties you'll be getting. So, oh. yeah. So, so I think you should try that. And that's findawayvoices.com. Yeah. I think I put it in the chat. Can you see? Oh, okay. It didn't pop up findawayvoices.com okay awesome and then so with that one you can just place it in there and it should <clears throat> it will be distributed everywhere and it's that easy and if the audiobook's already done they should kind of yeah go yeah simply upload it and then of course it would be available everywhere okay that's awesome man i really appreciated that and what do you think is, and then I guess it would come down to the promotion of like what you do, but she already did a very good job on it because it was bestseller and all these different things for the hard copy. She just never did anything with the audible. Mm. Yeah, I think like with the promotion, I think if she's doing really good, then that's fine. Ask her to keep doing the thing that she's doing. But for the audiobook, you know, like the podcast is one of the best places to promote the audiobooks because, you know, like, People are trained to listen to the to the to the podcast, right? And now yeah. the 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 audiobook is kind of a progression where people can listen to the book while working. Oh, something. that's genius! That makes sense because it's the same journey. Yeah, so they are trained <laughs> to listen instead of reading or uh, maybe Kindle or paperback. So it's best to just simply promote it on podcasts. She can yeah. live with listen notes. And then, of course, she can get some really, really good podcast. And she like for every episode, like if if she if she finds the right podcast, she can get how much thousands of uh, people listening to one episode, right? Yeah. So in just half an half an hour time or one hour time, like she can reach out to massive audience with her. And she, yeah, she's big in the church space, so like that speaking niche. So it's just. I mean, I think it could land if she's open to it. Yep, of course, definitely. But even if she's not, just putting it out there and just collecting on the audiobook will get your residuals regardless. Exactly. Yeah. So people make more money from audiobook than Kindle or paperback. How much would you sell the audiobook for? So it should be at least uh, fourteen ninety nine minimum, or it can go up to twenty four ninety nine. Or something, but yeah, fourteen ninety nine should be like is the usual price of the audiobook. It's the average price people go for. Okay, so that's where you can actually make money on it. Yep. And how much do you, how much do you, could people make on it? Like a lot. Some people make a lot of money, right? Yeah, people make a lot of money from 
they don't make a lot of money from uh, ebooks and paperback but if you do the right kind of promotion the audiobooks really can get you some good money really that's fascinating the paperback and the other one the market the is the market is actually shifting to the audiobooks that's because of these podcasts that's why these are more valuable exactly yep all right vikrant you're the man we will uh we'll talk soon i appreciate sure. your time and yeah if you got if you get a little link a little promo thing let me know yeah i'll do that i'll be adding it in my to do list for tomorrow and i'll be reaching out to you over the email yeah you're good man i appreciate it. have a good one bye see ya yeah.